Let us appreciate those voices better than that. And as they settle, we all rise as we go to the intercessory session. We welcome the music team to lead us in praises and worship as we go to the intercessory session. Yes, even as the worship team prepares themselves to lead us in praises and worship, it's good for us to have a moment of adoration this morning. Adoration and thanksgiving. We thank God for the Lenten season. Truly, Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. So let us thank God for that period of prayer and fasting. We thank God for enabling us to journey through that period of Lent. And as we continue to thank God for various things that he has done for us, he has blessed us with rain, he has blessed us with uh, many gifts that we cannot count all of them, good health, and many things that calls for thanksgiving. We have a moment of appreciating that it is God who has made us to be who we are today. Let's even continue to commit our nation unto the Lord as we know that uh, we need God to lead us and to guide us in this nation. We remember our nation. Let us also remember uh, the Church of Christ. Even as we remember our diocese, this coming Saturday is when the Electoral College will come together and elect the bishop. It's good for us to commit the whole process unto the Lord that the will of God may be done. Let's not forget our personal in our desires, our personal needs. We remember that we've come in the house of God with our needs. Let's take them to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, worship team, is your time.
Y yo, yo
from sin. You're familiar with my weakness. Devote and do.
appreciate everything that you've done for us. We continue to thank you, O oh God, because of the journey of the 40 days prayer and fasting. We are not taking it for granted, O oh God, that you are the one who led us in the journey of seeking your face. 
You are the one who led us even when we, were, we consecrated ourselves in your presence that God, you may guide and lead us, you may order our steps. This morning we've chosen to say thank you that God, you did not left us. You've chosen to come and say thank you, oh God, because of the whole journey. Even as we brought our adoration to you, oh God, we thank you because you accepted the adoration from thy servants, oh God, and it happens to you like a sweet aroma that is pleasing to you. Even when we came to you, oh God, in the, in the repentance of our sins, we thank you, oh God, because we are assured that you are a loving Father. We are assured that you are caring, Father. We are assured that God, when we seek you, you are ready to forgive our sins. We thank you, oh God, because of washing our sins away. We thank you, oh God, because even we, when we, uh, we came before you in thanksgiving for the things that you've done for us, God, you accepted our prayer of thanksgiving. Even when we came to you, oh God, for restoration, you restored us back. Even when we had a moment of engagement, oh God, we thank you because you help us to engage spiritually. And we want to thank you, oh God, because of the stronghold that you broke for us. We want to continue to thank you, oh God, even as we approach the redemptive week. And this whole week, God, you have been together with us. We really appreciate everything that you've done for us. In those 40 days, we know that God, there are those that you set them free. God, we appreciate you. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We know, we know in those 40 days, prayer and fasting, we have those that God, you've met the desires of their heart. We want to acknowledge your power that was working in our midst when you are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive all the praise. Receive all the honor. Receive all the adoration. Because you are our Father. You led us. Your Holy Spirit was very much present with us even when you are praying. And our desire, Lord, is that you may continue to be together with us. You may lead us every time when we pray that you may order our steps in the name of Jesus Christ. We continue, O oh Lord, to thank you for the many things that you've done for us. This morning, as we are in your presence, we can affirm truly that God, if you could have not been on our side, the enemy could have swallowed us alive. We are here full of thanksgiving, O oh Lord, that you have been on our side. We are here, oh God, from our hearts, glorifying, magnifying your name, appreciating the many things that you've done for us. You've blessed us with the blessing of rain. You opened heaven for us, oh God. We appreciate the gift of rain, King of all glory. You want even to thank you because of the gift of our children. They were in school and now, oh God, they are preparing to, to close their schools and others have closed. We thank you for them. We thank you for the protection. You've protected them in school. We trust upon you, O oh God. Even as they are coming back home, you are going also to prevent and to protect them. Keep them safe from the attacks of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, Father, we want to continue to lift our nation unto you as we pray for the president and his deputy, as we pray for all the leaders of this nation, that God, they may use the wisdom that comes from you. That God, you may direct them, that the uh, decision that they make may come from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We can't forget, oh God, to pray for your covering over our nation. As we pray, oh God, that you may protect those who are traveling. That God, even as we continue to stand against the spirit of death in our nation, we speak against premature death in our nation in the name of Jesus. We speak against road accidents in our nation in the name of Jesus. And even in areas that there is no peace, where they have a challenge of banditry, oh God, we speak your peace upon those areas in the name of Jesus. May you guide those who are in security sector, oh God, that you may lead them even as they continue to ensure that there is peace in those areas in the name of Jesus. We even pray for different ministries, oh God, even as in a special way, commit even the health ministry unto you. That God, in as much as we trust upon you for other things, we trust upon you that our doctors may find the lasting solution in the name of Jesus. That they may go back to the hospital and treat those who are sick, oh God. We pray, oh God, for every areas 
in our government that God you may lead them and you may direct them in the name of Jesus we commit the church unto you O God even as we pray for the archbishop as we pray for all bishops all archdeacons all priests and even the lay readers we commit them unto you as we remember even all Christians and in a special way oh God you want to commit our doubts unto you even as on Saturday we trust upon you when the electoral college will go to do the election of the bishop God we pray that may you have your way God we pray that may you intervene God may we pray that may you give those who are concerned good health oh God may you prevent may you prevent them from any attacks of the enemy God every person who is concerned we speak your peace upon them in the name of Jesus and above all oh God our prayer this morning is the same prayer that Jesus prayed that may your will be done that is our desire oh God that let your will be done in all the exercise oh God let your will be done we cannot forget, oh God, to bring our personal needs, and personal needs unto you. Whatever the needs, the desires of our hearts, oh God, we surrender unto you. May you meet each and every one of us at the point of our needs that we may not come out of your sanctuary the same way we came. Whatever the needs, oh God, those who are sick, may you heal them. Those who are stressed, may you relieve them from their stress. Those who have come to you, oh God, seeking you for your blessing, may you bless them. In the name of Jesus, we surrender ourselves to you, O oh God, because we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all, even we can imagine or think, and that's our desire, that God may you even answer that which we've not called this morning, all for the glory and honor of your holy name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the reading of the gospel. The gospel appointed for this day, the Easter Sunday, is the gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 16, and I'll read from verses 1 and following. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 and following. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might, uh, they might go to anoint uh, Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after the sunrise, they were on, on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Gadidi. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to, every, uh, to anyone because they were afraid. And this is the gospel of Christ. The congregation sit as we welcome the choir for a second presentation.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hamjambo. He is a sikunjema. Ambayo to kumbuka kufufuka kwa Yesu. And we are at St. Christopher's Church. We love visitors. And so this is the time to appreciate the visitors who are in our midst. If you are a visitor coming to see us for the first time and to fellowship with us, please just put up your hand so that we can appreciate you. Yes, we can see there is a visitor there. Oh, there are quite a number of visitors. Uh, visitors, if you don't mind, just be upstanding where you are. Uh, we'll give you just a moment so that you can greet us, and then uh, uh, we can proceed. Uh, just stand where you are uh, so that somebody will give you a mic uh, so that uh, we can be able to hear your voice. Uh, there are quite a number, a few more are standing uh, behind there. So we'll start with those ones who are behind. Praise God. Amen. I'm Betty Karioki, and I'm happy to be here. Amen. Karibu Betty. Praise God, Church. Amen. I'm Rispa Kioni from Kitale Diocese, and I'm happy to be here. Karibu Rispa. Praise God. Amen. I'm Scholastica from Bungoma. Karibu Scholar. Praise God. Hello. I am Zebi Deborah from Nambali. Karibu Zebedi. Okay, praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. My name is Vitali Swanyama from Kitale. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Amen. Uh, my name is Stephen Robert Oching. Uh, I'm from ACK Cathedral. Uh, I'm here uh, by extended greetings from my grandmother here. Uh, thank you for being here. Asante. We all give them a clap for welcome. And if you are seated next to a visitor, please, on our behalf, shake their hands and tell them, Karibu. And uh, for the visitors, if you are coming to be with us here, uh, please feel you are in the right place. Uh, if you are on transit and going back to where you came from, we need to send you with our greetings. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we can meet with the visitors. They will be guided by the usher after the service where they can meet with the vicar. Uh, we are encouraged to continue giving towards our generator projects. Uh, maybe we just be reminded our pay bill because it's important. Uh, the coming Sunday, uh, we want to clear with this debt uh, so that uh, we are free of debt uh, as of 7th of April. So please come prepared. In between, uh, if you get any funds, please just send to the account number and remember to put the account name as generator uh, so that uh, we can be able to clear these debts. Now we come finally to what I love to read. Buenas y fiwe. Bands of marriage. And I hope these people are here with us today because we would love to see them. I wish to publish the bonds of marriage between Marianne Amondi Ogutu of ACK Faith Eastgate Parish and Ellen Ocheng Ogutu of ACK St. Christopher's Menengai Parish. If any one of you has any just cause or impediment why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. This is the third time of asking. If there will be no impediment, the wedding is scheduled to take place right here on the sixth day of April 20, 
24. I don't know whether Alan is here with us today. Alan, are you there? Well, he is not. He's late. Uh, but you all know uh, Dr. Ugutu, so this is his son. And so please remember to pray for them as they prepare for this journey. Uh, it's a tough journey. I believe all of us have seen how the devil has been working on marriages. And so it's up to us to also work very hard with prayer to invite Christ in all our marriages. God bless you. We invite the vicar for the remaining part. Thank you so much. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Did you say it as you meant it? Eh? I want to see that. Just yes, wave at me. Today is a special day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It is true. And I can see it on your faces. By the way, brethren, it's such an amazing time. As we culminated, uh, we, were, we were able to culminate yesterday in our evening service. Uh, the 40 days of prayer and fasting, the Renten season. And I just want to say a big thank you, a big, big thank you for your commitment, for your availability. And especially even when we call that uh, the Holy Week that we come to church every evening from 5.30 to 6.30, and uh, that is what you did. We are grateful for those who also took time to pray from where they were, and we are very grateful that the Lord was able to help us also complete uh, yesterday. And even as we come to this very special Sunday, the Sunday that we celebrate the power of God of resurrection. May the grace of resurrection be present even among us in this service. May the Lord be the one who bring to life every manner of deadness in our lives. May we, because we came to the risen Christ, that he may be able completely to bring to life even those dry bones, because he is able to speak life even to every manner of deadness in our lives. And therefore, we celebrate Christ and his power of resurrection. And I just want you to remember that you had a neighbor uh, when you came in, and you still have one. And I want to ask you, please, would you mind to turn to them, look at them, uh, shake their hands, tell them, Happy Easter. Is it not a blessing to have them around? You are free to look uh, at your back. Ata nyuma, wale wako nyuma, mnaeza angalia nyuma yenu, nani ya hapo, uh, na mungu wa sana. Asanteni. May the Lord bless you so much. Now, I also want us to do a lovely exercise. Uh, I want to make you just a bit uncomfortable, just a bit uncomfortable. Uh, I know there are people who are used just to sit where they sit. Eh? There are others who want to be at the entrance and not anywhere uh, from the entrance, and the others want to be just at the middle. For that, you have to go to the middle, but you have to go to the middle. But I have been advised by the ushers that at least today, being an Easter Sunday, and all of us, we have collapsed the services, that we need to create space for others. And you hear? What we want to would you push completely, push completely to the wall? Push completely to the We want to leave this place open, so that as we bring the people, they can be able for man after this, we'll be hearing God's word. I don't want when the word of God is being uh, uh, preached that people cross your feet. I want to walk up under here. Let us push to the, to the wall. Thank you so much. I can see already we have created spaces. Before we start introducing the plastic chairs on the walkway, I know that we still have no space. And you're here. Nasini vizuri yata kupenda jirani yako. Asante ni sana. The other important thing I just want to mention very fast. Uh, 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 there is a lady by the name Phyllis Thiongo. Uh, I'm advised that Phyllis worshipped in this church about seven years ago. And also, this is Phyllis. And uh, maybe you can recognize Phyllis. Uh, me, I met Phyllis when I was serving in Njoro. And uh, Phyllis was working with Focus. And I remember one time, uh, we invited her to come and preach and uh, talk to the young people. Uh, I didn't know that she was a member of St. Christopher's Church, but now I've been 
uh, called by the members of the family about Phyllis, who also went to Nairobi after he also had uh, ill health. And uh, we want to let you know that Phyllis rested with the Lord. And when that message was brought to us, I thought it was wise. Because also the family requests that they will be doing the service uh, of our sister here on Wednesday uh, from 10. And uh, he will be laid to rest in Joro, Kenyatta. And therefore, it is good to pray for the family. Good to pray for Doris and the other members of the family. Uh, and I know you know them more. And therefore, let's keep praying for them. Because it's important to be true. Uh, that at least uh, if she lived among us, even at death, we cannot pretend we don't know her. Therefore, that is it. And I know it's true because I've done my whatever on my records. And I want to thank God that uh, 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 our sister uh, who have rested with the Lord, she has really served uh, with focus. That is where me, I met her. And I know that she has also preached. Not once I know I'm hearing she has preached in this pulpit. I want to believe that the Lord will continue to bless the family. Now, having said that, I don't want to have any other announcement. They have already been done. It's just to remind you uh, that at least uh, uh, Sunday, uh, please come. And I will be reminding you and will be sending the e-card so that you can also be able to reach out to our friends and family. So that, as Prof said, we come to the end of the project of our generator. And I know that the Lord is going to do that. Our preacher today who God has prepared to bring uh, the word of God on this beautiful Easter Sunday is none other but our brother Benson Matani. Do you welcome the word of God? Thank you so much. May we all lie together. May we all lie together. We'll be given a hymn to receive the word of God. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, I reach I count but lost and for contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. Though the me more I sacrifice them to his blood see from his head his heart his feet so run not for me to die Father, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise for sending your only Son to come and die on the cross for us. We thank you, O oh God, because of the love that was full and you could not control it. Just 
by thinking of us and sending your son to come and die for us. We continue to thank you, O oh God, even because he did not stay in the tomb and you resurrected him. We want to thank you because of the power of resurrection that we are trusting that God, you are ready even to make us know that we are a partaker of the same. And now, God, we continue to thank you for the many things that you've done for us and even calling us in your house that we may praise you, that we may worship you, that we may pray, and even that we may have a moment of hearing from you. Now speak to us, O oh God. We are very ready to listen from you. Speak to us that you may give us hope that comes from you. For this is our humble prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. We may take our seats. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Christ is risen. I just want us to say like we mean it. Christ is risen. Thank you so much. He's risen indeed and we are praising his name, saying that hallelujah, he is our savior. For those who are new and even for those who are our members that uh, for quite some time we've not been together with them for quite a number of Sundays, and even for those uh, that are not our members, but they've chosen to come and uh, worship with us, uh, we can see you. Uh, for the sake of you and uh, everyone, I would like to just mention my name again. I am the Reverend Benson Matani, and Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. I am a priest serving under our archdeacon, and I want to take this moment to thank God again as I thank uh, the leadership of this church led by our archdeacon for even giving me this opportunity to be the minister of the word. And today, even as we celebrate the recent Christ, or as we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday, it's good to know that uh, today marks uh, the end of the, the Holy Week that we started on Sunday. And we thank God because of the journey of this week. And again, even as yesterday, we mark the end of the 40 uh, days prayer and fasting, good friends to continue meditating upon uh, the period of prayer and fasting and uh, have a moment of asking ourselves, what has the Lord done for me in the uh, 40 days prayer and fasting? And maybe probably you may ask your neighbor, how many days did you fasted? How many days did you, uh, did you came to the church for prayers? And uh, what is the impact of the 40 days prayer and fasting? You know, those questions are very good. As I want us today to, as we've uh, uh, said that uh, Christ, uh, Christ is risen, and is risen indeed, uh, is a great moment for us uh, to ask ourselves question is good to begin with a question and ask yourself who is Christ and uh, what does Christ mean to you who is Christ yes is risen who is he and uh, for you to understand who Christ is you can never speak of the resurrected Christ or the message of resurrection if you cannot go back to the background and understand who Christ is. As we celebrate the recent Christ, friends, it is a great moment to think of what Christ means to us or who is Christ to us. And for us to understand it, we can go back to the background. Jesus, during his birth, and even before his birth, there were prophecies. Prophecies were made about Jesus. And uh, the time that he was bad, the birth of Jesus, we came to the ministry of Jesus. We continued to the passion, death, and resurrection as it was commemorated on Friday. And again, we came now to the recent Christ, the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
and probably maybe let us briefly have a moment of doing the background of Christ. Many prophecies were made, but one of the prophecies of the birth of Christ we find in Isaiah chapter four, uh, chapter seven, verse fourteen, it says, uh, uh, "It says that say to him, uh, say to him, be careful, uh, keep calm. Uh, therefore, the Lord Himself give you a sign." That is Isaiah chapter seven, verse fourteen. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign: the virgin will be uh, will be with a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. One thing, Jesus was not an ordinary human being. Yes, it was, he was 100%, 100% man and 100% human. But his coming was prophesied many years ago by the prophets, and not one prophet. This is just a, one of them, Prophet Isaiah, and he, prophet, he prophesied many times about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we understand Christ, it's good to know that his coming was foreseen long time ago. And then later we come uh, even for the birth. The birth of Jesus had two faces, the ordinary part and the other part which was not ordinary. We know that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and he was born in a manger. That we find in Luke chapter 2 verse 6. I just be reading one verse. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to a firstborn son, she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So he was born in a manger. He was born with an ordinary woman, but his birth was not ordinary because uh, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And then we come to the ministry of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus went through Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every diseases and sicknesses among the people. We are still in the question, who is Jesus to you? Or what does Jesus mean to you? And as we continue to think of that, to us we can explain that better if we can be assured of what Christ has done for us. What has Christ done for you? Do you have a testimony that in the ministry of Jesus, you can relate it with your, with your life and say that if it is teaching, Christ, you have taught me. If it is uh, preaching, Christ, you have preached to me. And when it comes to the healing of the sicknesses and the disease, Christ, you have healed me. And that is a testimony for all of us. God has healed our spirits. God has healed our bodies. So even as we continue to understand Christ, We'll have it in our mind that, yes, we understand Christ by the great works that he has done for us, by the great revelations that he has given us, the revelation that even at the moment that we feel we are down, we know we have Christ on our side. And then we came to the passion. But before we come to the passion, uh, uh, the suffering and the death of Jesus Christ, again, we remember that after Christ was baptized, he was taken by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness, the 40 days, in preparation for the ministry that was ahead of him. You know, we have just ended the 40 days, Lent, prayer and fasting. And we can say that probably maybe the Christ was preparing us for the great assignment that is ahead of us, for the great ministry that is ahead of us. And may God cause us by his spirit that we may go out there and preach. Hello? That we may go out there and preach we may go out there also and even uh, heal those who have various kind of sicknesses and disease. Let us even go out there and heal the hearts of people. Those whose hearts are broken, God is calling us to go out there and heal their hearts by the grace that he has given us. You know, the theme of this year is very, is very rich, that we should ensure that the fire of the altar continuously, it is continuously burning it must not go out. Hello? That fire in our hearts, the fire of preaching, the fire of teaching, the fire of saying that Jesus, because you came and you died for our sin, you are calling us also to imitate you. And in as much as Christ has called us to imitate him, let us not be silent. Let, let the 40 days not uh, uh, go like that. Let us uh, uh, have an impact. 
And as I, I remember, I was the first person who preached the New Year message. I said that by the time we'll continue in this year, our church will be very small because the fire that Christ has lit in our hearts will make it, will effect, will make it to be effective. Hello? So our 40 days prayer and fasting, friends, just the same way as Jesus did, as we know that he gave us power and authority to go out there and preach. Let us not be silent about what Christ has given us. And when we come to the passion, uh, suffering and death, and uh, that one is very fresh in our minds because it's something that we commemorated on, on, uh, uh, on uh, Friday. And uh, we find in Matthew chapter 27, verse 28, just a few, uh, uh, a few part of it, of what happened, is that they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. In verse 28, it says, and when and then twisted together a crown of thorn and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, king of Jews, they said. Those, those are just part of things that happened when Christ uh, was handed over to the Jewish authorities. He was mocked. They spit on him. They, they, uh, they, they put a, a crown of thorns on him. They, they crucified our Savior. And when Christ was crucified, his hands were open. And major statements, the seven statements, but one of it, Christ said that it is finished, means that Christ paid it all. That is the meaning of Christ in our lives. As we try to understand Christ, let us know the punishment that he paid. It was not in form of any money. He paid with his own blood. He paid with his own life. It was a very painful death, brethren. And that makes us to continue to understand who Christ is in our lives. And as we understand Christ, you know, friends, is good and allow me to submit to us that any man or all kind of suffering that Christ went through, uh, to some extent, uh, even they mocked him. They, they, they told him that, uh, and uh, yesterday I shared and I, uh, I told people that it was not an ordinary suffering. And uh, maybe we can try also to, uh, to think of it and ask ourselves, if it could be you, uh, could you sustain that kind of suffering? Maybe, <laughs> I mentioned yesterday, when Gine, maybe you could have died the time that we felt that Judas is coming to betray us. That idea, that, that fear itself could have made us to die at that moment. So Jesus endured up to the cross. Maybe if he could have been an ordinary human being, he could have died uh, at the time they started to strip him. The time they started, even, even maybe the time they spat on him, do you know what it means to mate? That is what happened to Jesus. And Christ is calling us to be very faithful and to keep away from sin. You know, when an element of sin is found in us, that is to mean that we are taking Christ back to the cross. That is to mean that the sacrifice that Christ gave on the cross was not enough. So may God cause us to live a holy life, even as we continue to think of our Dalsatian theme. The major theme of the book of Leviticus is holiness, and we find in Leviticus chapter 19. Let us live a holy life so that we cannot take Christ back to the cross. He paid everything. He paid for our sins, and he said that it is finished. Hello? P praise the Lord. And now the turnaround of everything is the risen Christ. That Christ now is risen, and is risen indeed. And we can acclaim to it and say, hallelujah. It is a day of rejoicing. It is a day of celebration. It is a day of saying that they thought they... They kill him. They thought he's in the gray, in the tomb, but now he's, re he's risen and is alive forever and ever. In Matthew 28, verse 6, he says, He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where they lay him. This is the words of the angel. This is the words which gives us hope. This is the words that we are proclaiming today, saying that. Uh, 
He is not, he is no longer in the grave, he is risen. He is no longer where people thought he will stay forever. And I was trying to think of the prominent burials that we've been doing and uh, the people that uh, we've buried them during that moment of preparation and the time of death. That is where now we feel the impact of that person. But once they, are, they have been buried, to some extent we have the memorial service, yes, but to some extent those people uh, seem to be like they are forgotten somehow. I was trying to think of Jesus who died more than 2,000 years ago, and up to date we are preaching about him. Up to date we are professing, or we are professing of the good things that he has done for, for us, up to date, we have things that we can say that, yes, indeed, we know who Jesus is. We can explain. We know what Jesus has done for us. And that makes us to know that, indeed, our Savior is no longer in the grave. This direction is significantly important when it comes to the journey of Jesus Christ. And for us to understand the resurrection of Christ, yes, it was good for us to know the journey down, back from the prophecies, from his birth, from his ministry, from what he went through, uh, uh, the works of the cross, and up to date when we come to the resurrection. Briefly, I want to mention the events of the Sunday morning, or the events of the resurrection, and one of them is the women who had the intention of anointing the body of Christ. That is one of the events. The women, you know, the, the different gospel writers have their different uh, uh, writings, and uh, we choose to use Mark, who say the three women, who was Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James, and uh, Salome, who at some point in time choose to go to, the, uh, to, anoint, to anoint the body of Christ. And as you can see the uh, resurrected story, it is somehow closely related even to the birth story. You see, the time that Jesus was born, uh, first the information uh, 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 was given to the shepherds, and later to the wise men, who even went with the, with the incense and the mire and those, the Frankists, to go and even celebrate and say the king of the world has been born. The same way with the women. And somebody was trying to, to, to ask, how, how, why women? Hello? Praise the Lord. And uh, in the ministry of Jesus, to some point, he used to do miracles. And uh, he said that, uh, uh, don't speak about it. But I'm wondering, when it comes to resurrection, the first people to get the news of the recent Christ is a woman. Yeah. Why probably others argue that uh, this is the message that needs to be spread to the whole world. Hallelujah. That if you want your message to be spread very quickly, say it to a woman. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because it's a message of victory. It's a message of the recent Christ. If you tell it to a man, it dies there. <laughs> Men are known by keeping secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if there are messages that we can go out to preach, it's the message of the risen Christ. We'll come to see that is the message that we found our salvation. Two is the conversation at the tomb with the angels and to some extent the angel, uh, uh, with Jesus. When they reached the tomb, they found that the, uh, the stone has been rolled, and two people with white linen clothes have stood there. Probably maybe they might be an angel. And other gospel writers uh, uh, noted that it might be even, even Jesus himself self who was speaking. They were thinking of the angel, but it might be Jesus. And the third part of it is the literal experience, the impact of the resurrection. We had earthquake and even the terrifying look of the angel himself because he was shining and such kind of things. Briefly, as I wind up, I want to share with us the lessons or the, or the insights from the resurrection experience. And I want God, God to help us to even get just a few things or three things before I sit down. The insight from the resurrection experience. One, Jesus is concerned about us. Praise the name of the living God. Jesus is concerned about us. And number one, Christ is concerned about our worries. He con is concerned about our anxiety, our weaknesses, our fears, our limitation. He is concerned about our lowest moments. And again, we need to be very careful to know also Christ is concerned about our good times. 
is concerned with us even when we are thriving, is concerned with us even when we experience increase. And in Mark chapter, uh, uh, where it was read for us, chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, this is what uh, the Bible says. When uh, the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bo uh, bought spices so that they, may, they might go to anoint the body of Jesus. Very early, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they ask each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, has been rolled away. Praise the Lord. We see women with a good intention going to anoint the body of Christ. But on their way as they were going, they were concerned about the stone, which is very huge. And they were asking among the, amongst themselves, who is going to roll the stone away from us? But in as much as they were talking and as they were going, they found that the stone is no longer there. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is very much concerned about the worries that we might be having. And maybe today you've come in the house of God with a lot of worries, with a lot of anxiety, Christ is concerned with us, and he was initially concerned with us, God himself, by even sending his son to come and die for the cross for us. So the original intention began, we started with God, that he was concerned with us, he loved us, as we, uh, we, we saw in, uh, as we all know, the common verse, John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, that he sent his only son, Jesus, to come and die for our sin. I don't know if you have any kind of limitation or any kind of fears. All these ladies, they had a lot of fear. They had a lot of limitations, you know. And the Bible says that it was not a, a just like a small stone. It was a big stone. But in as much as they continue with their journey, they found that the stone, the stone has been rolled out. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Let us, friends, cast our anxiety to the recent Christ. Let us cast all our troubles. Let us cast all those things that seems to give us stress unto Jesus. That's why when we and today we are going to do it in our Holy Communion service, we'll say all our troubles, we send them to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we to the cross of Christ. And even the devil's plans, we, we send them to the cross of Christ. Praise the Lord. Our cross is empty. Christ is no longer on the cross. Christ is no longer in the tomb. Christ is risen. Praise the Lord. And as we try to think of our worries and our think about our limitations, it's good also to know that God is concerned about our good times. I was thinking of the first miracle that Jesus did. He changed water into wine because he was concerned about the happiness of those people. Can you imagine the officiator of the ceremony, the, cele uh, the celebrant, now the wine is finished. And you know, wine was the climax of the celebration. On, sun on Saturday, we have a wedding. Hello? Praise the Lord. You know, wedding is a good thing. I love how Prof used to announce the bounds of marriage. And we have the climax of the wedding, you know, in our case is the cake, cutting of the cake. If you go to a wedding and you don't eat a cake, you know you have not reached the climax of the wedding. And probably during the time of those people, their happiness was uh, uh, the time that they take wine, and uh, Christ was concerned about it. As we saw in John chapter 2, uh, verse, uh, few verse, verse 7, he said, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they fill them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the mass of the banquet, and they do so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water, and, and, and that a water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside. So Christ was concerned about the happiness of these people, being his first miracle to do. Brethren, do you know what? Christ is also concerned about your victory. 
Christ is concerned. That's why even before we take our children to school, we come and we pray for them, that they may succeed in school. That is why when we have graduation, we have a moment of calling a priest even to thank God. God is concerned about that. Even when you, you buy a land and you start your, your construction, I don't know, do you call a priest to do even the groundbreaking, the construction that we've done? Have you found yourself to call a priest to do the groundbreaking or we find ourselves calling a priest to come to do the opening? Christ is concerned about our successes. Hello? Christ is concerned when we are thriving. Christ is concerned even when we build houses and we live in them. Let us not take every moment that Christ has given us for granted that he came, he resurrected, that in as much as we live in this world, we may live trusting upon him that is, is, is the one who is in charge of everything that we are going through. Two lessons, let us seek God when he's found. In Luke chapter 24, verse 5, in their fright, the women bowed down in their faces, facing down the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? It tells us that we need to seek Christ while he is found. The women seek Jesus in the tomb, but they did not know, or they were not aware that his reason is no longer in the tomb. Sometimes when we go through challenges, difficulties, when we find ourselves in hostile bed, that's where we rem remember Christ. That's why we say that akwabi mchungaji akuje aniombe niko hospital. The time that we are growing uh, through hard moments, and to some point, and allow me to say this, what wengi huwa wanaokoka wakiwa jela. When you go to the prison there, you'll find people Though, again, other peoples find themselves there, not because of the mistake they committed, but many people who committed any, uh, 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 any, uh, the mistake they committed, most of them who are in Okokawakiwa prison. It's not a must. Let us seek Christ while he's found. Christ is found. Christ is risen. Christ is calling us today that we may seek him while he is found. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 60 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. And this is the time for us to call Christ. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the evil man is tossed. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God for the will, uh, for he will freely pardon. And as I have mentioned, as Christ is calling us to seek him while he is found, to look, upon, to look upon him now is again calling us to live a sinless life, as I've mentioned, that we may not take Christ back to the cross. And last but not least is that there is power in resurrection. Tell your neighbor there is power in resurrection. The events of resurrection were very terrifying. The events of resurrection shows the sovereignty of our God. It shows the power of God. It shows that their God has defeated death. It shows that uh, God is able to do the impossible. And as we seek God, trusting upon him, as we have all said that there is power in the resurrection, as, as the vicar said, that anything that looks like it is dead in our lives, may God bring it back to us and to our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew 28, verse 2, let us see the events of resurrection. There, there was a violent earthquake. One of the events is the earthquake. And then number two, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. In verse to, uh, chapter 28, verse 3, say, he, uh, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. There was a shaking. And you see, I was trying to think of these guards. I know these are the same guards who were bribed to go and say that they, they came and stole the body of Christ. Yeah? They, say they, they took the bribe. And you see that they were so afraid and they shook. The, the effect of the ground, the effect of the earthquake caught over with them. 
and they appeared and, uh, and they became like dead men. Some extent it was like they, they died. But God made them to live, to go and witness, to go and speak of Jesus, but they spoke it in a wrong way. Friends, even as I'm winding up, I want to bring it to us that Jesus is no longer in the grave. The resurrection power took over his body and he resurrected. And the resurrection means to us that that God has accepted the sacrifice that Jesus offered. Mungu amepokea na amekubali. Amesema that Christ because it was, it, uh, it was uh, you to die. Na umekufa a blameless, a lamb without any, uh, any blemish. I have accepted your offering. I have, I've accepted that you came so that our sins can be forgiven. So resurrection means that uh, Christ has accepted the sacrifice which was holy and acceptable. And through the acceptance of the sacrifice, we receive salvation. There could be no salvation without the resurrection. And there is where we find the formula of salvation. Do you know where we find the formula of salvation? We find it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That through the resurrection of Jesus, that is why we get salvation. It says in verse 9, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, says that if you confess with your mouth. You know, we have many formulas of salvation. But this is the right formula of salvation. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you believe, you confess. It is, we have two things, that you believe and you confess. You believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you are going to be saved. So the resurrection comes with salvation. And it's good as we continue or as we wind up to ask, are you saved today? We'll give you a moment if you are willing to accept Jesus Christ. In verse 10, he says, For it is in your heart that you believe and are justified, and in your mouth that you confess and are saved. And the scripture says, Anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Anyone who accepts salvation will never be ashamed. You can never, if you are a true believer, be ashamed of the salvation that Christ paid for it through the works of the cross. You can never be great of the salvation that Christ gave us. It is through the resurrection that our faith gains meaning. The Christianity happens to be a very different religion. We know of many religions. We know of even Muslim religion. They talk of uh, Muhammad and other religions. But only in Christianity that faith, our faith gains a meaning, a meaning that Christ died and he resurrected and is alive forever and ever. In 1 Corinthians, that was read for us, chapter 15, verse 4, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. He said that we keep the fire of the altar burning. We keep on preaching because we know that our faith is not in vain because Christ was uh, resurrected. More than that, in verse 15, it says that we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him. In fact, the dead are not raised. In verse 16, say, if, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. So Christ and the message that we are preaching today gains meaning because of the act of resurrection. Because if Christ had not been raised, meaning that our preaching could be in vain. Singekuwa na boldness yote ya kubiri about Jesus. Maybe at a level tungi wako na wakati wakubiri ambao tunaubiri. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you will still be in your sin. Through the resurrection of Christ, the narrative change. And the narrative that changed in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, says, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came through also a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Because Christ is alive, we too shall live. One man, one man by the name Adam came and sin got into the world. One man by the name Adam sinned. He disobeyed God. 
and sin came. But we thanks be to God for sending his only son, Jesus Christ, to come and die and make his, the resurrection power raised upon him that our preaching may not in vain. And Paul himself, and you know, prayed the, uh, Paul, the great man of God, after he has studied everything, because he was a philosopher, and after he has written all the books, when he approached the time that he wanted to die, he said a very profounding statement in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. For I want to know Christ and the power of his, his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. He wants to know Christ and the power of his, of his resurrection. That is our desire today. That we can only know Christ and the power that raised him from the dead. It is not an ordinary power. And that is the power that I'm praying for all of us. That it may take over our life in the name of Jesus. When I was in Fiwe, I want to do a proclamation to you, friends, even as I'm winding up, that may the resurrection power take over your life in the name of Jesus. This is to mean that you are not going to die. This is to mean that any part in you that seems to be dead is going to be resurrected. This is to mean that we will not experience death in our every area, in our every faculty of our lives, that may the resurrection power take over your health. If your health is deteriorating, there is power in resurrection. May the resurrection power take over your spirituality. May the resurrection power take over your finances. Praise the Lord. And if you believe, say amen. amen. That since Christ is no longer in the grave, he resurrected. Also us, we live to enjoy and to rejoice that from today, as we continue, we'll proclaim that Christ, because you are you, you are risen. Even us, we are going to be the partaker of the blessing that comes with the resurrection. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We really thank God for his word, such a powerful message this morning, and uh, we can also sing and say, up from the grave he arose. Glory be to God. Let us now all stand and continue in the order of our service. Article 18, we stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and appointed Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we sit, let us uh, go to prayer of penitence, Article 21. Here are the words of challenge and comfort our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. If anyone could, would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. 
Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the way of Jesus, come with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen you. So let us rever reverently confess our sins to the Almighty God. Almighty, Almighty God, God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens and all are high above the earth, remove, from your, remove your sins from you as far as as the east is from the west, strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Together, thank, thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming but assured, not trusting ourselves but your word. We hunger and thirst for righteousness and ask for our hearts to be satisfied with the body and the blood of your son. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. May we all stand together, even as we prepare to share our peace. Uh, two things will be happening at the same time. One, after we share peace, it will be a time to give our offerings. And that particular time, I'll be asking that uh, we will be able to resume our seats. And uh, uh, there is uh, one of us who had asked to do a song. In fact, two of them, uh, our sign... Uh, uh, our sign uh, language uh, interpreter, I will be doing a song that will be assisted by the choir. But before that song, uh, Mrs. Mbogwa will be doing a song. Uh, she asked on Sunday that she want to do a song. So after this, we will we, we're going to sit. We'll continue bringing our offerings. And uh, all manners of offerings, we'll give them uh, together. Uh, those who have, don't have the Easter uh, envelopes, uh, they are there with our ashes. If you don't have them, you can be able to uh, raise your hand where you'll be seated. You'll be offered the Easter envelope so that we can also give our thanksgiving even as we come to the end of our, our very, very blessed uh, Lenten season and celebrate the, the selection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before them, Article 28. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Be with you.
Thank you so much. Let us pray for the offerings. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for so many blessings that you have given unto us. And thank you, O oh Lord, even for reminding us that we should come and give in your house. Now, Lord, your people have given all forms of giving, thanksgiving for the Easter, and even the normal offerings, O oh God, and all other forms like tithe and everything given in this house. Lord, we pray that you may receive them for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us now all stand. We remain standing for our thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? Is Christ among us? Is the Spirit here? This is our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are his people. We are redeemed. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you have sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying, rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him, you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with light and life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through this gift of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, you took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it. He gave it to the disciples saying, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. Even after supper, he took the cup. And he gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the, the blood of the new covenant that is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together. We will rise together. We will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy. And await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our praise, making a full atonement of the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by lacing it from death and granting me great honor at your light hand on high. Amen, Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah. May we sit and as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, we break this blood to share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share one bread. The cup of blessing in which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Draw near with faith and receive. Christ is the host and we are his guests. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us your peace. And now the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Keep your body and, and soul in eternal life. Take and eat this remember as Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Keep your body and soul in eternal life. 
drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. We wish to invite you to celebrate the Easter Eucharist received by faith, and may the Lord grace of the power of his election be your portion. Karibuni san. Hey. Okay. 
smiters he gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to them that plucked of the hair and his cheeks to them that plucked of the hair and his cheeks to them that blacked of the him, he hid not his face from shame and spitting. He hid not his face from shame, from shame. He hid not his face from shame. Shame and spitting.
said, rejected. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and a acquitted with grief. A man of sorrows and acquitted with grief. He was despised Rejected A man of sorrows And acquitted with grief And acquitted with grief together article 34 article 34 article 34 let us do that uh, prayer after communion together article 34 together O oh God of our ancestors God of our people before whose face human generations pass away we thank you that in you we are kept safe forever and that the broken fragments of our history are gathered up in the redeeming art of your dear son. Remember in this holy communion, bread and wine, help us to walk daily in the communion of saints, declaring our faith the forgiveness of sins and the selection of the body. Now send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and to work for your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. And brethren, today we are reminded that all our problems And I just want us to do it as we mean it. Eh? And now, brethren, all our problems, we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send to the cross of Christ. All our curses, we send to the cross of Christ. All our fears and anxiety, we send to the cross of Christ. All our struggles and our pains, we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes, we send to the risen Christ. Very well. You can have your seat for a moment. Very fast as we come to the end of the service, I got a note that the ushers had said that there is something they wanted us to pray for before uh, we leave. And I was waiting, but I did come forth. But I know that as they do that, we have a team that is visiting us. And uh, they had mentioned to me they will be learning rate, but they will get us. And uh, I would want to invite my brother, uh, Sila, uh, together with the team to come over. Uh, these are gentlemen that we knew in this church when they were young, young men. Eh? Remember the Nicola ceremony, and uh, you'd want to uh, do a short song, and after that we are able to.
Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe tena. Ah, uh, mimi naitwa Bani Asila ama Laba Asila. Ah, uh, ni baba yangu, ni ndugu yangu mkubwa. Ana majina mengi sana. He's my mentor. Wengine wenu mnanikumbuka labda tulikuwa hapa kitambo kidogo wakati tulikuwa tunaanza kuimba. I used to sing with some young men. Tulikuwa tunaitwa St. Nicholas Harmonies. That was uh, back then uh, some years ago. So after some time Mungu alifungua njia na tukaenda kuishi kule Finland. So that's where I live nowadays. Lakini saa zingine natembea nyumbani kidogo. Na unajua ukitembea nyumbani lazima uje mahali ulitoka sio? Yeah, so today uh, I came with my friends because uh, we have a tour we are doing to in Europe. Tunasafiri kwenda kule tunaenda Finland, Switzerland na Sweden for about two and a half weeks. Na these are friends of mine from here ambao wananipeleka kule kufanya uh, kumtukuza Mungu kidogo kupitia nyimbo. So nilimruhusu mchungaji tuje tuwe na nyinyi even though tulichelewa kidogo tulikuwa kule cathedral lakini nikamweleza ningependa sana angalau tupitie nyumbani tu tuwasalimie na tuimbe nyimbo moja tu kidogo ili tumsifu Mungu pamoja. Umetukaribisha? Asante sana. Uh, na muona mama Olwenye pale mamu ndakusalimia baada ya service. Asante sana. So tu, uh, kabla tuimbe tuko na rafiki yetu hapa anaitwa bwana Kasipuli. Sijui kama mnamjua labda asalimie kidogo tu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Unajua rafiki yangu Bani tunatembeanga na yeye lakini hajai jua ya kwamba mimi ni mtu ambao niko ndani ya maombi sana. Kwa wale mafans wangu wanajua shekhe wanamjua kivingine lakini nimeokoka. Unajua hivyo? Ninakaa na Mungu napenda Mungu. Kwanza pokeni salamu kutoka kwa Rais William Samoe Ruto. Mimi naitwa Dr. Kasipul. Mimi ndio chawa wa Rais. Nipigie pigeni Ruto takofu. Nimekuja na salamu kutoka kwa jamii yangu. Of course, niko pia na mke wangu. Tumetembea na yeye na mimi ni mtu ambao ninaamini kwa familia na naamini kwa Mwenyezi Mungu. Ningependa mjue hivi na mfahamu hivi. Kuna shida ambayo inaua watoto wetu inaitwa depression. Nobody is concentrating about depression because of mental health problem. Watoto wetu wanaumia, wanakosa tamaa, wanakata tamaa, wanajinyonga, wanajitupa chini ya lori, wanakunywa sumu. Ninataka niwahimize eh, kanisa tafadhali mjitokeze mupigie watu simu kama uko na mtu pale na umeona amenyamaza kwa muda mrefu reach out and call that person na mwambie Mungu anampenda kwa sababu mental health cannot be treated na hizi ma, ma kukalishwa chini consult Mungu tu ndiye anaweza kutibu mental health and if we treat mental health we will going we are going to fight cancer we are going to fight hiv we are going to fight drug addiction kwa kuwapea maneno ya Mwenyezi Mungu si namna hivyo So mimi nikitoka hapa ninawaachia Mwenyezi Mungu na naenda na huyo Mwenyezi Mungu ni unajua na kuru ndo pale penye Mungu anapenda ni town yenye ukiingia kanisa zimejaa. Na kuru ndo town ya Mungu. Nikitoka hapa vile nimetoka hapa najua kwanza hata rais atanipea kazi kwa sababu nimekuja hapa. Nipigie makofi. Yote tano tisa tuzidi kumomba Mwenyezi Mungu na mzidi kuombea gavana wetu Mama Susan Kihika. Asante ni sana. Asante. Thank you so much. Uh, wimbo huu ambao tutaimba unasema muamini Yesu mta mngependa kuimba na sisi si ndio na pia tumkatikie Mungu pamoja sio so niwafunze kidogo tu mbio mbio alafu tuimbe sio so unasema kwamba chorus inasema kwamba najua bwana atafungua njia atatenda miujiza maisha ni mwako alafu mnajibu hivi Mwamini Yesu Mwamini Yesu Mwamini Yesu maisha ni mwako tujaribu Mwamini Yesu Mwamini Yesu Mwamini Yesu maisha ni mwako Asante Mtatu join si ndio Asante Jua 
atafungua njia atatenda miujiza maisha ni mwako Atatenda miujiza Maisha ni mwako Najua Bwana Kimbe pamoja Mwa 
An exciting thing to it's an exciting thing to see you back uh, is also an amazing thing uh, to know that God is uh, giving you a great platform uh, not only here but all over the world and I thank God that uh, we have come I want just to remind you the time I prayed for you to live at the cathedral these are the words I told you that God has given you an opportunity he has given you wings, but do not forget where you are coming from. Do not forget the Lord, because when you remember the Lord, he will continue to raise you from one level to another. Uh, and I am grateful that God has uh, continued to do great things. And I thank God for the team, the people that God is bringing along your life. Please, Bunny, do not forget the Lord. God will do much more. And he will take you to higher heights if you do not forget the Lord. I want to say that I'm also grateful. Uh, I talked to him because of our dreams we, a dream we have now for the street worship. And I told you this year, we are going to the street. And uh, not only that, on, around June, on our garden here, we're going to do uh, a big worship that we're going to invite the churches, our churches around the, the city. And uh, you know you have the platform. I have the people. Because I'm a pastor. And therefore what we're going to do is like, uh, and we are in agreement, that we're going to ask God to help us, that we may be able, as our brother is saying, to make sure that God send the grace of revival in this city. And it will start with us. And therefore, if God gives an opportunity, we pray that the Lord also will cause you, that as God brings you, uh, please see the big picture, what God is doing in your lives. Just be the big picture. God wants to use you. God wants to use you as instrument. 
in this end time that he may be able to make you instrument of bringing the final and the end revival, not only to Kenya, but everywhere that the Lord is sending you. Please keep your, your eyes where God wants you because God partners with people that are in his heart and are doing his purpose and are fulfilling the course that he is doing at that time. And therefore, we pray that the Lord bless you. Even as you leave for Europe, uh, it's my prayer that God goes before you, that you find favor. June, come back. Uh, Nikweri, I'm serious about that. And then it's like we're going to do what God is calling us to do in this city for the grace and for the glory of God. Maybe you can kneel even as we dedicate you to God. And we are happy that you also chose to come. Mungu our bariki sana. Let us all lie together as we pray for these dear ones and even as we do our final prayer. I will ask the clergy to come near here so we can lay our hands to these dear ones. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you because of the mandate that you have given to us as a church. Lord Jesus, we pray that in this season that you may be able to open the doors of St. Christopher's to be ascending church and ascending church to the fields and to the ministry of the kingdom. Thank you for bringing these dear ones. And they desired so much that they may be able to come to be with us. And Father, we thank you so much for that desire. Because even if we ask them to come, they will not be able to come. But Lord, they have asked to come into this altar. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to speak a renewal of their covenant with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The renewal of their calling, our Father. That when you called each and, each and every one of them, and especially the leader, our brother Abani. We want to pray that Baba Jehovah God, that Asila will find even the renewal of a covenant with you, our master. That as he pick up the challenge to go all over the world to minister with music and with gospel music, that your grace will go forth with him. We pray that our Father and our God, that the sacrifice of Jesus will speak over their lives, our Father. That as he lead this team and other teams, our God, he will find the grace and the wisdom even Jehovah God, the wisdom of management, the wisdom of making right decisions, the wisdom of reading Jehovah God, men and women, to your agenda in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you are the one who anoints men. And I want to pray that, Lord, you anoint him with the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, as he walks his life, our Father, he may be able to find you, that he may lead others to you, our God. We pray that you open doors, even bigger doors, our God. Thank you for what you are doing in his life. Thank you for what you are doing in his ministry. Thank you for how you are connecting with people, men and women, in different networks, our God, that he may be able to become relevant in our generation, our Father. As he comes relevant in this generation, we pray that he may carry the agenda of God with him. And therefore, today, in the name of Jesus, we decree your agenda over his life, your purpose, our God. Because before he was born, you knew what you wanted him to perform and do. We seek in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you open and rebirth in this altar, the, the agenda and the purpose of his life in the mighty name of Jesus. And for the Lord, as we release him, together with this team, Jehovah God, we pray for safe travels. We pray for open doors. We pray for favor in strange lands. We pray for open doors, even in places that they have never been. We pray the Lord Jesus, even as they find a lot of invitation, give them the wisdom to know the doors that you have opened. And Father, they may shun the doors that the devil is opening. Give them a spirit of discernment. To know whom to connect with. And to know whom they work with. And to know whom they connect with in the network. So that they may be able to perform your will. We worship you and we honor you. And all that them that are blessed of you, no one can curse. We speak a blessing over every one of them here. You know them by name. You know their struggles, our Father. You know their aspirations. You know their giftings and their talents. We pray that you use them, our Father, for the glory and honor of your name. Now this have the world. We pray that they may enjoy your peace. They may enjoy your blessings. And they may enjoy life in abundance. And therefore we bless them and send them in your name. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us celebrate this dear ones. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We wish you well. Travel safe. Mungu waende na nyinyi. Mungu wabariki. Kaspul. Leo ndiyo nimekuona live.
na ndio unakuwa na kelele kumbe unaweza tulia we thank god by the way we thank god we thank god may the lord bless you so much and uh, we wish you well and this is home this is home eh this is home and god bless you so much i appreciate them and they see it very well mungu abariki sana uh, even as we stand we want to take this opportunity from this side the pastoral team to wish you a very blessed easter uh, a very easter blessed easter holiday mungu awabariki tuwe na easter ya baraka even as we welcome our children back so that they can have holiday together with us uh, they cross down schools we pray that your god's presence will go to be with you uh, we have these uh, uh, fruit of the land that have been given by uh, mrs oreni from the garden and you'd want that this become a contribution to the uh, generator and therefore what we're going to do is just to receive them with thanksgiving and then from the desk there uh, they will be sold si mnajua tunauzaga hivi tu nje si hapa ndani alafu anasema hii angetaka iende kwa kazi ambayo tumeitaja and therefore that way he was she was very uh, particular uh, unajua vitu ikija hapa huwa ninapeana kwa hivyo najua aliogopa ikifika hapa nisipeane <laughs> na kwa hivyo so we need also to dedicate this and uh, even as we do the work of the lord so let's dedicate this uh, father we thank you because this is a sign of fruitfulness and mighty and everlasting father we want to speak that these fruits our father we dedicate them we speak the blood of jesus and we pray that these fruit of the land will become a sign of fruitfulness among us because lord we have behold the grace of fruitfulness this season and even now we declare by the sign of finding even things from our land that are beautiful this way that this grace of multiplication and increase will be multiplied among our lives we pray in the name of jesus that this will be a sign of the things you are doing among us and there are things that you are about to do even jehovah god as they are sealed so jehovah lord to meet the needs of the church we pray that your blessings will continue to rest upon your people and therefore we dedicate them and set them apart that they become also a blessing to the family that they are going to use it in the name of the father son and the holy spirit and now may the lord bless you may the lord keep you may his face shine upon you to grant you favor even mercy and forgiveness of your sins may the lord cause harmony and peace in your families may the lord scatter every man of darkness from before your paths may the lord bless you are going out and you are coming in may he bless you in the land bless you in your farms bless the birds that you keep bless your animals may the lord bless your career may the lord bless your businesses may the lord bless your children that they become even allos that will never put you to shame even when they contend with the enemy at the gate may the lord cause your family even to be fruitful even a fruitful vine around you and may the lord continue to be your leader god even as we enjoy the power of resurrection may the lord select everything in your family everything in your life everything that the enemy have tried to kill and destroy and may the grace of restoration continue to be your portion and may the peace of god that surpasses every human understanding be your portion in your family and all faculties of your life and may the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit may remain with you now and forevermore the lord be with you go in peace to love and to serve the lord can you turn to your neighbor tell them you are blessed you are blessed my sister you are blessed you are blessed prof you are blessed reverend you are blessed thank you so much you come to the cross of oyster sunday service we will be given songs to recess and uh, may the lord bless you have a blessed easter Oh, 
Gracias.